yeah, China has been a very, very big part of my life. I have been studying Chinese for over 20 years. I remember that we were on the first direct flight from Washington, D.C. to Beijing that ever boarded. And I remember visiting China for the first time. There not being that many high-rise buildings, things, there were so many new, new buildings. When, when Chinese people saw foreigners, they, they were so shocked by us. One person even came up to me and asked if uh, they could touch my hair. Really amazing that you started learning Mandarin Chinese when you were five years old. I'm sure this wasn't going to be the decision for many parents in your school district. No, no, definitely was not. A lot of people were skeptical and they thought, oh, Chinese language, I'm not sure that my child needs to learn that. But my parents were really adamant that they thought that China would be a huge economic power in the future and that learning Chinese would be a, a very big asset. Yeah. How forward thinking were her parents, Very right? forward yeah. thinking. I feel like, Michelle, we need more people like Jennifer, right? Yeah, that definitely. bridge between yeah. the two cultures. I definitely think that young people today are not really aware of the state that global trade was in just 20 years ago um, and how much it's come since that point. As a U.S. citizen uh, living in China, it's been, it's been such a blessing to be able to see so many products from home um, in China and so many products from China at home. When I'm in China, I can get Oreos or a Diet Coke when I'm, I'm in like the middle of nowhere. So it's, it's um, really interesting to see uh, how trade has um, affected the product availability in, in each country. And I really do hope that uh, both that um, we can work towards a more sustainable trade deal among uh, the citizens of the world.